The Fujifilm X-H1 is a two-generation old flagship camera that was sucker punched after Fujifilm released the X-T3 after six months. Since then, Fujifilm went on to release the X-T4, and recently the X-H2, the X-H2S, and now the X-T5. The camera has long fallen into the shadows and has not been considered by a lot of people. In 2023, I'm asking the question, is the Fujifilm X-H1 still a relevant camera whether you're a beginner, videographer, or somebody looking for a genuine hybrid camera at an affordable price point? In this video, I want to highlight five key features that might give a compelling case for the Fujifilm X-H1 and also some drawbacks that might make you want to look elsewhere. Let's get into it. The Fujifilm X-H1 has a 24 megapixel sensor. While it is not as large as the 26 megapixel and arguably not a massive difference, it is also nowhere near the 40 megapixel sensor that you get in the X-T5 as well as the X-H2. It does however have a lot of positives including better noise management, the camera shoots 4K 60p as well as 120 frames per second in 1080p. It is however 8-bit recording and does not provide 10-bit recording internally or externally. But again, you're not getting this camera to shoot Netflix documentaries for a lot of video needs. This is more than sufficient and this camera packs a big punch. The second is the body and the build. This is why I call this camera the ultimate hybrid camera. Because compared to the X-H2 and the X-H2S, it still keeps its tactile dials, only losing the exposure compensation dial which is now replaced by a button, but it still has more of a manual analog feel, including a new or GFX type feel to it. And added with the grip, it just gives you amazing control for video and allows you to shoot with boost mode. It also allows you to enjoy having more battery left with the battery grip taking two batteries to shoot for longer periods. Fujifilm X-H1 is Fujifilm's first camera to have IBIS, it has 5 stops of IBIS and admittedly Fujifilm IBIS is not the best in the industry but coupled with OIS lenses you will definitely get to enjoy the benefits of shooting handheld with this camera. It shoots 14 frames per second which by today's standard it is in no means exciting or impressive at all. I could be wrong. For most of our needs, it will do well if you shoot weddings, events, parties. This is more than sufficient. Maybe not for bird and wildlife, maybe not for sports or fast moving subjects. But again, for most needs, this camera is still sufficient. It has amazing color reproduction and also has 16 film simulations which you can enjoy to get beautiful JPEG straight out of camera. While this camera is discontinued, you can find it on the used market at a steal and I don't think for the kind of features it packs, you'll get anything competitive in that price point. The drawbacks obviously being that the center is old, the autofocus is old and the processor is old, two generations old to be exact. This means that in today's standard, it is not really impressive and there are better options out there, albeit not at the same price point. And also depending on how you feel about the feather shutter, I actually don't mind it. But yeah, I do find that it is very easy to overshoot and also accidentally press it when you're recording video or even stop your video, which is even worse. So half. With good video specs, durability and amazing stills is what you consider. In a hybrid camera, I would definitely recommend the Fujifilm X-H1. Anyway, let me know what you think. Do you own one? Do you still find that it's relevant? Does it meet your needs? Is it a camera that you would recommend to somebody looking to get a hybrid camera at a decent price point? That is it for me guys. Thank you so much and until next time, 